Hi and welcome to my video. This time I want to showcase my amplifier, my all-in-one tube amplifier and I call it my little magic bamboo box. The outside is made from bamboo, it's not that big in size and it really it sounds magical. It is made by the iFi, it's a UK company who are mostly known for their head temp uh, amplifiers, their um, palm sized uh, iDeck and the iPhono and the iPhono is how I discovered this company. I was looking for a new pre-phono amp and I had read a little bit about the iPhono and its quality and I found out that they just introduced the iFi Retro Stereo 50, that's the official name, most people call it iFi Retro, which in, has integrated this iPhono, which of course triggered me. It is a tube amp. And this is of course uh, was intriguing for me. It's my first tube amp and I was very interested to see how that sounded. If you look at the front, it is a um, vintage looking, 70s look to it. It has a lot of knobs, so I feel a little bit like DD in Texas Laboratory. Ooh, what does this button do? And it has a lot of functions, but the control is actually easy. But it is just that it has a lot of possibilities. Later on I want to show what inputs you can use on the back side and we will have a look inside, I will take off the casing. So first things first, this is the power switch where you can switch it on. It takes about 45 seconds to heat up and then it switches on the speakers. This is the tone control, you can override the tone control with uh, this switch. Uh, here you can select the source you want to play and this is the volume knob. The volume of this unit is twice 25 watts. Musical watts, what they have done, they have compared the output of this one when it starts clipping to a solid state and then it is compared to a 25 watt uh, solid state amplifier. Because a tube amplifier, when it only amplifies a sinus wave, it usually cannot do that so well. It's better suited to amplify music. And I must say the 25 watts sounds very realistically my uh, music room, which is my living room, is 6x6, six six, so 20, uh, 36 square meters, and it fills us up easily. Uh, although I have to uh, put it a little bit higher as normal. Normally, it's, uh, for my previous amp, it was 9 o'clock, and this unit I usually play it around 10 o'clock. Maybe if I want to annoy the neighbors, I put it at 11, but it does not go party loud. Maybe that's good to know. Um, then the two switches I uh, did not mention are the two in the middle, which are two features. The one is the 3D or the X base. It's a little bit like a uh, loudness switch, but much more subtle. Uh, it has three settings on uh, a little bit and even more. Uh, this is my standard setting. I always have it in the middle because I found out with my um, stand load speakers that it shoots them very well. It amplifies a little bit in the bottom and it really gives the impression as the extension of the lower frequency is much better. And next to it is uh, the 3D switch, uh, which is originally, it, I think it was made for speakers, uh, which uh, you can put over your ears, and that the sound was getting uh, more, not inside your head, but outside your head. And when you connect speakers, it automatically switches uh, to the speaker setting and it really extends the sound stage beyond your speakers and it, it curves it a little bit even so it tries to get around you um, that's a very nice effect I was in the beginning a little bit skeptical because it, uh, the way I now also the way I now say it it sounds a little bit unnatural but I've since I've switched it on it has never been off because it sounds very well especially in combination with the x bass setting it really gives a nice um, uh, soundscape of the music that is being played. I did not mention it has two uh, outputs for uh, headphones. I don't have uh, headphones so I cannot say that much about it. This is for the in-ear pieces and this is for the headphones that go over your ears. 7 watts so that is 7000 milliwatts and as I understand it it means you can put almost any headphone uh, connected to it and uh, it will play the music very well. Going to the back side, here you can see all the connections. Uh, maybe I should show the top first, because here you can see a slot where you can put in your phone, for example, like this, 
or you can put in your iPad. I don't know if it takes the, the bigger sizes also, but this is the, the iPad one. I use this one to listen to Spotify or to tune, uh, tune in the radio and then I could select the station and see what was playing, which was a nice touch. You can connect it with NFC, so that is wireless, or you can use Bluetooth. Um, if you want to use Bluetooth, you should connect the antenna, then you can play anywhere in the room and connect to it and play your music. If you have an Android phone, you can use Optics. And that means that you get CD uh, quality music or near CD like quality music. Um, if you go over the different inputs, this is the phono stage, these are the standard inputs, and then you have the di digital input. The phono stage is really, really good. It has an MM input, moving magnet, and a moving coil. And for the moving coil, you can select uh, MC high or MC low. I am using a DL103, so that's a uh, low output voltage cartridge, and it plays it very well. The maximum amplification is 62 dB, and uh, I must say the combination is perfect. Well, maybe it's even better with the 103R, but that I will find out in the future. Um, you can, for example, not select the loading, and the loading is fixed at 330 ohms, and 200 uh, people fired, I believe. And I think that suits the R even better, but what they have done is they checked which setting would be the best for most cartridges. And there you also see a little bit of a difference between the iPhono and the iDeck. Um, they did not really just put everything together, connected it and brought it out as an all-in-one unit. No, they really integrated every unit because they the secret, I think, is they knew which kind of amplifier you are going to use. So also the noise level of the amplifier they knew, and they integrated that with the iPhono and the iDeck. And so they could make some components a little bit cheaper or uh, connect it in a different way. The total price for this unit is $1,500, which I think is very reasonable. Or I cannot judge it, but it's very good value for money. Um, so, to continue with the way you can connect the phono stage um, is that you can select with this knob what kind of uh, cartridge you have. It has an extra setting for plus 6 dB and that is if you have a vintage recorder. Because the normal outputs of uh, the, these inputs is usually 2 volts and with the plus 6 dB you can use um, a tape recorder for example that has an output of 0.7 volts, not millivolt, but volts, sorry. Then you have the SP diff input, which you can also use as an optical input. Then you need this kind of um, converter, which is included. And this is very nice, because if you use it in this way, you can connect Chromecast. And now the possibilities are endless. You can connect anything. I mean, when I see a YouTube video which recommends certain music, I usually look it up with my phone and play it over the Chromecast through this unit and through this uh, digital DAC converter because if you use the optical output of the Chromecast it overrides uh, the DAC of the Chromecast itself, itself. Then you have the USB output where you can uh, connect the uh, PC uh, or your uh, iPad if you use the camera hub. Uh, it can play almost any format, so for example PCM, CD quality, is 44.1 kilohertz, but you can go 48, 96, 192. It can go up even to 768. I don't know if music is available in that kind of resolution, but it can handle it. So at this moment in time, this thing is future proof. Um, I find also take a lot of care that your unit is up to date. So when there is a software update for the iDeck, it is the same hard as in the retro. You can also update with this unit. Uh, it plays uh, also DSD and DXD. And, uh, yeah, pointing to the right uh, logo. Um, I have not that much experience with those formats. I've used HF uh, Onkyo on my phone to play music. It works. It sounds very good. Um, it actually, I must confess, when I first connected the CD player to this one, 
it almost sounds like my final setup. Um, this really changed my point of view in the discussion between final and digital. They can sound both very, very good if you have the right components. All those uh, digital formats are played in a na native way. This, that means that it is not converting between one or the other. It really plays that uh, format. So that are most of the inputs discussed. Left over is the speakers. Um, the minimum speaker sensitivity you can connect, or you can connect anything, but what is recommended is 87 dB. So that's already uh, quite an effective speaker, though it's not in the range of above 90, but you should take care that you do should not go below 87 dB uh, speaker. I have 87 and that goes very, very well with the unit. But if I ever get a chance to get a more sensitive speaker, I will for sure try that because that sounds as an interesting option. One thing I did not mention about the phono is that on the front you can select your IQ curve. So uh, standard is of course RIAA, but you can switch to a Columbia curve, a DECA curve uh, before they instated it. Um, of course, it's a big discussion. If you go online and check when they changed it officially and if they did later also use their own curves or not, I will not, not go into it, but it is fun that you now have an integrated unit uh, amplifier where you can change this. And the way I have done this, and I do this especially for example when a record sounds very thin, and that can even be an early 70s pressing, when it's sounding very thin and the music sounds not so nice, that's usually for me an indication from let's check if in different curves give a better result. And it does usually. So it has uh, different formats you can select or different curves. And especially the DECA curve I use a lot. And what I do is I just set the tone control in uh, the DECA or what it is mentioned here. It's one of the few audio components that I'm still using uh, the manual because I can't remember them. And then I use the direct a switch to select it. So normally this is over, uh, overridden, overridden with this uh, knob and when I switch it on then it selects this IQ curve. And I do that also uh, when uh, music or an album sounds a little bit where the bass is overblown or a little bit too loud then I switch to the Columbia curve and now you can of course get a discussion is changing the IQ curve, changing the tone controls. I've played around with it and I'm going to say no, because when I change to one setting, it is not just the bass which gets fits in, it gets the complete sound stage or the way it sounds, it really clicks a different, in one size it fits to one much better sounding album. It's not just one component that you change, no. Changing this one component, you change the whole thing and that's why I still think that changing the IQ curve can sometimes really help making a poor sounding album sounding very well. That's the front. Uh, I think we have now covered everything. Well, no, I missed the status LEDs. You cannot see that, but here are status LEDs. Here's also, it says which, if you're playing a digital format, which is playing. And that is specified here. And then the color says what is the resolution of that format. So if you're using DSD in a certain uh, resolution, then you can see in the front if, that, uh, if the unit is playing it in the right way. Now let's open it up. The way I usually do that is I put it on the back, take a Torx screwdriver and take away the four feet. And now the outer casing, you can slide it out. Usually I do it a little bit, then turn it around, put it over the edge of the table. And now you have the tube separate from the casing. And as you can see, the casing is not that much because a lot of heat is coming from this tube. And to dissipate the heat, they have made a lot of holes in it. And it gets really hot. So, the fun part is of course the tubes, and here you can see the four power tubes, which is the AL84, and here the small pre-driver tubes, which have the triodes inside, 
Uh, here I have a broken tube. It's the AL84. Uh, it's a little bit of a strange choice to take this one. You see a lot of um, AL34 or the KT88. Um, usually the reason is power. Uh, this is a, the output of this uh, tube is not so high. And that's what we discussed in the beginning. But it is a very sweet sounding tube. Um, I like it especially as it is a Dutch design or it was designed by Philips. And they put it in their transistor radios in the 50s because it amplified and it could drive their speaker directly. Um, so how does it sound? How does this amplifier sound? That's difficult to describe. It's, it's not so easy, but there is a certain sweetness to, to it. Because if you ask me, is it neutral? I would say no. Does it, is it, does it color the sound? I would also say no, because it's not warmth that you're hearing. It's a certain magical sweetness which makes the sound very natural and very lifelike. If you take a piano or a guitar or a voice from a woman, it really sounds, it, it really grabs you. It, it really wants you to play music. And I think part of the magic is a tube they've chosen. This is, by the way, it are not no new tubes which are used, it are NOS tubes. So they have bought a big bag, uh, batch of uh, tubes, and I think it's military grade. They use, uh, they call it the EL84X, uh, because it gives out a little bit more power. And they use it also in a spe uh, specific setting that they use the extra pin uh, to get that power out. Because if you look inside, by the way, this is a uh, faulty tube, so I can touch it with my hands. You should no, never do that. So the, the lifetime of the tubes is around 6,000 hours, 6,000 to 10,000. So if you play a few albums every evening, you can play for five years, I think. Uh, if you look inside, you can see two jumpers. There's a jumper here, a jumper here somewhere. If you take those off, you can use a standard EL84 and go tube rolling if you want to. Um, for the, the other components, as you can see, the, the, the circuit is very simple. There are not that many components. That's typical for a tube amplifier, I believe, and which is part of the magical sound it can produce. Um, the unit is in ultra-linear mode, so that means that most of the time it's class A, so about till 10 watts it is uh, producing music in class A. These cables are the sound uh, or the connection to the pot amplifier, which is an ALPS. It's very high quality uh, volume pot meter. And that, I think that's typical for this unit. Where the sound is really important, they put in very high quality uh, components. You see in the back a, a motor and the volume you can also uh, control it by remote control, which is a nice touch. If you're sitting in a chair and you can just control it from there and no, don't have to go to the amplifier, but that's the only thing you can control. You cannot switch inputs, for example. Is there something else? Oh yeah, here you have the output transformers. I don't know if that's visible. And you have the power supply. And the power supply, I think, is also part, a little bit of the secret of this unit. And that's also why you cannot really directly compare this AL84 amplifier with a uh, vintage AL84 amplifier because the noise level is much lower and I think also it can drive the tubes with a higher uh, power output or with, with for a longer time. Um, because of this low uh, noise level, it, uh, this amplifier has a very big dynamic range. So the backgrounds are very big and even small hints of noise, you can already hear them and uh, hear them, pick them up. And this dynamic range also helps to increase the perception of the volume you're getting because the background is, uh, is uh, lower. I think I have now covered almost uh, everything from this amplifier. It, as you have seen, it has an extravaganza of possibilities of inputs. It is integrated in a very well way, the different components and the different subsections, and it is very enjoyable to listen to it. It really invites you to listen to music, and that's the biggest compliment I can give it. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.